Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is part 13 of this uh, 76 C3 that's getting an LS swap. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and click on the playlist. It'll get you up to speed as far as everything has transpired up to this point. Also check out the description. Uh, it's gonna have the uh, the running parts list as far as what has been purchased to get up to this point. Uh, there's gonna be no cost because again, YouTube is forever and what the cost is today, it may not be uh, uh, relatable in five years if you're watching this five years from now, right? But check out the uh, the description because it's gonna give you the parts breakdown of everything that I purchased to get up to this point. And as the build uh, progresses, the uh, the play the uh, description will be updated as well. So, all right. So, like you saw, it cranks over, and we're getting 40 pounds of oil pressure at crank, which is good. So it's pretty much the same thing as what we had when uh, we ran the same tests uh, when the engine was in the stand. All right. Um, so we are very close to getting this thing to fire off for the first time for the per for the past week, week and a half. I've been uh, doing a lot of little things. Uh, I've been mainly installing the, uh, the, the, the harness from BP Automotive, uh, working on the uh, PCV system, extending the wiring for the fuel pump into the car, and then hooking up the, uh, the vacuum system, right? So like, if you don't know, uh, vacuum is very important to these cars. Uh, not only do you need them for power brakes, uh, the Corvette, they, you know, they, obviously the headlights uh, rely on vacuum for them to articulate up and down. And uh, the heater controls actually uh, rely on vacuum. And last thing, the transmission uh, also relies on vacuum, right? Um, because with the Turbo 350 in there, it actually is, looks at manifold vacuum as far as when it should, it should be shifting, all right? So uh, we're gonna talk about vacuum. We're also gonna talk about the PCV system, right? And how we're gonna hook that up. We're gonna maintain it. I'm not gonna be running a cash can or anything like that. So what else? And one other thing, uh, the PCM has been sent out, right? So um, again, this is a budget build. Um, so we need the PCM uh, updated or, or basically flashed, right? Uh, I actually work in, in IT. I work in systems all day long. I'm very familiar with this stuff. But going back to the whole theme of this, this is actually a budget build, right? So if I want to go along the, the line of HP tuners or, or, or something else, right? Go to HV tuners, um, it'd be around 400 bucks for the module and 100 bucks for credit and for the credits. And then again, it's 500 bucks, right? Whereas if I just sending the PCM out to, uh, to be flashed, right? Um, it's 75 bucks. And basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna remove that. They're gonna uh, size the injector flow based on the injectors I have in the, uh, in the car. Um, they're gonna do a couple other things. They're gonna, uh, uh, take care of the O2 sensors and whatever and some emission stuff and for 75 bucks, right? And uh, so again, you have to remember as far as the engine, I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing the heads. I'm not changing the cams. I'm not changing the, yeah, I'm not changing the, the cam, right? I'm not doing anything with the rotating assembly. I'm not changing the valves or the springs or anything like that. The only thing that's being changed in the car is the intake and really that's being done for hood clearance. I could invest in, in HP tuners and everything else and, that, and have it, but again, at the end of the day, this is a budget build and 500 bucks is still 500 bucks. So I elected to send it out to a company and I'm, at this point, I'm just waiting for them to do their thing and to send it back. So hopefully within the next week or two, we'll be able to fire this thing up for the first time in, in the car and hear it run. But with that being said, why don't we go ahead and walk over to the car, show you what I did and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so when we talked about uh, running the wiring for the fuel pump into the car, uh, we have three wires. So we have the red one, which is 12 volts applied. We have brown, which goes to chassis ground. And then we have black, which goes to battery ground. So what we're doing is we're continuing the red and the brown through to the front of the car. Uh, we're just running it through the uh, cargo containers. And then we are making a turn under the console and then uh, we're bringing up to the front of the car. So as far as the battery ground, we've uh, terminated it with a ring connector using shrink wrap. And then we are utilizing a, 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 an extended um, side post battery bolt, which allows you to put a uh, connector on there. So once we're ready to uh, attach a battery, that bolt will just attach to the uh, to the cable like it normally does and then it'll tighten up all right so we've continued the wiring for the fuel pump 
That's in the flex room right there. Again, it comes uh, from behind the console, continues in through the uh, existing hole in the firewall. And what we've also done is we've also run the lead that contains the uh, OBD2 port. And I'll talk about where we're gonna mount that in a minute. But also on that same lead, we have the plug, well, the leads for the check engine light. So what we've done is I've put two connectors on there and I've gone out and I've purchased a check engine light, which I've already mounted to the uh, this uh, trip piece. So it will be right underneath the, uh, the windshield washer switch. So if we have a check engine light, that will light up and we'll see it pretty easily. And also on that same harness, we have one for the speedometer, which we're not going to use. And then there's the white one, which is for the tack, which we will address at a later date. So as far as the OBD2 port, what we're going to do is we're actually going to mount it underneath the uh, heater box. But I don't want to uh, drill into the heater box because I don't want to hit the heater core. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount up, I'm going to uh, create a plate and then I'll mount this, uh, this guy to the plate. And then what we'll do is we'll use some double side Velcro to stick the plate to the bottom of the, uh, the heater box. And basically that guy will sit right there and uh, you'll pretty, pretty much will never see it unless you're looking for it. Okay, so like I said, over the past day, I've been uh, working on installing the harness and uh, I'm very happy that I made the decision to go with the BP Automotive harness. But again, because again, uh, for somebody like me, first time doing this, really makes it pretty much idiot proof, right? And the reason I say that, everything is marked and tagged. So they, you know, you have the IAC right there. You have the uh, throttle position sensor. You got it marked for the alternator. And I'll tell you why that's good in a minute. Uh, you got the coolant temperature sensor down there. Again, everything's marked. Everything pretty much kind of just drops in place as you lay it out, have all the injector plugs. Got the plug for the uh, coil pack. So like I mentioned before, you have the IAC and the throttle position sensor. And then on this side, you have the plug for the alternator, right? So um, if you look at other harnesses and other uh, LS swaps, um, it's up to you as far as how you're gonna excite the, uh, the alternator so it begins to charge. Uh, if you look on YouTube and, and everything else, there are multiple multiple methods on how to get it done. So with BP Automotive, uh, you don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. All you have to do is plug it in. And so the way it's designed is uh, there is a resistance on one of the wires. I think it's the gray one. I can't remember which one, which basically tells the alternator, so hey, there's a load and I need you to start charging. So again, uh, it's one of those small things that is included in the harness that's going to save you some time you Larry you plug this in and as long as the alternator is good it should uh, start charging all right so over on the passenger side we have the continuation of the harness we got the main trunk or the main whip right there then we have the one for the all injector plugs and then we have a, uh, a branch for the um, air conditioning which we're not going to use so then we have the uh, the map sensor plug, mass airflow sensor right there. And then down there we have the leads for the fan controls. Not sure where those are gonna end up, but we'll figure those out. And then uh, the other two wires that we're gonna have to deal with is, this is the gray wire. This is that, the one that's actually gonna power up the, uh, the, the fuel pump once, um, once key is applied. And then you have the pink one, and basically this is the one that's going to wake up the ECU. So the way we're going to get power is um, from the car. So we're going to utilize the existing uh, plug. Yeah, I went to the uh, HEI distributor. So this has 12 volts in the on position and in crank. So basically it never uh, interrupts 12 volts. So we're going to use that to power up the ECU. So, And then we have here, we have the red wire going to the fuel pump. I've already uh, run the, uh, the brown one back to the head right there. You can see that. Pay no attention to that red wire. That is for something else. That's for another ground that was on the, on the car already. 
But uh, so all the grounds are tied back to that central point right there. Maybe it's hard to see, but there's actually two grounds from the uh, BP automotive harness as well. So as far as additional grounds, so we got the, uh, the harness grounded to the engine right there. So then as far as the ground going from the engine to the chassis, all we did is we picked up off the front of the passenger head and what we did is I purchased a 19 inch uh, battery cable and I attached it to the head and basically we're swinging it down and it's going to the, uh, the existing location on the engine cradle support right there. There'll be a little bit more detail on that once we crawl underneath the car. So, but yeah, this, um, this harness actually works out pretty well. Again, it's the way they designed it. Pretty much everything just falls in place. It's really kind of hard to uh, uh, screw it up. So as far as the PCM, what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize that bracket right there. And there will be a part number in the description as far as where I got it from. And the PCM is gonna mount right down there, right? And so we got the red and blue connectors and then we got the uh, fuse box right there. So. Originally, I had plans of uh, putting the uh, the, uh, the PCM in the car, but if you have a Corvette, you know space is at a premium underneath the dash. So one nice thing from BP Automotive is, you know, with the length of, of that whip off the main harness, it's long, it's like five feet long. Um, if I realized it was that long, I would have probably told uh, uh, BP Automotive, make it like two feet, because then if it was two feet, it would have, we'd be able to get it in the car, uh, no issues. But because it's so long, right, there's really no way to get all that mass of, of wire uh, in the car. So again, we are gonna mount the PCM. Once it gets back, it's gonna go right there along that fender, right where the uh, that uh, air exit is. So it'll go right there, but there'll be more on that on a separate video. All right, so we're underneath the car and we are on the passenger side looking at the starter. So one of the connections you have to make is this guy right here, uh, battery cable stud, right? So this is where the, uh, the harness gets powered up. So you gotta make that connection right there. And then behind it, there's another branch that goes to the uh, crank position sensor. Um, you have to take the start off to mount it, so that's pretty easy, right? Then as far as the other side of the grounding cable, like we talked about, uh, there it is right there. It's in the exact stock location as the 350 was. Cleans up, we have a nice good ground. While we're also down here, we have the two O2 sensor plugs. So you got one for the dry, uh, passenger side, and then we have the one for the driver's side, right? So some be aware of, uh, Per BP Automotive, if you look at this uh, O2 sensor plug, it's a flat four pin, which is different than the uh, the square four pin, right? And the reason is uh, BP Automotive uh, recommends that type of O2 sensor for when you're doing engine swaps. That particular O2 sensor, that style, is just better suited for this type of application. Um, so I do have to order those. If I looked from Delphi or from, or from NEC Delco, they're around 75, 85 bucks. So 175 bucks and we have to add to the budget, but again, it is what it is. It's pretty much all the connections you have to make while we're underneath the car. So again, um, revisiting the, um, all the wiring for the, uh, for the starter. I went ahead and replaced that clamp and then I grabbed some heat wrap and I put it over the, uh, the, uh, the wiring that's going to be pretty much close to that uh, down tube. So and then we got the fusible lanes and everything else. So, all right, why don't we uh, get out of here? All right, so as far as uh, PC valves and everything else, I have the original truck intake right here. So if you look at how the, uh, the PCV valve was routed uh, from the uh, truck intake, so there is the valve, right? So it would actually connect to the, uh, the valve cover right there. And then it's just going into the intake, right? So why don't we walk over and I'll show you what I did on the car. Why don't we talk about the system and how it's designed to work, right? 
So on these cars, there's a clean side and a dirty side as far as the PCV valve system, right? So if you ever pull out the, uh, the uh, valve cover off the passenger side, chances are it's gonna be pretty clean. And the reason why it's pretty clean is air comes through the throttle body, it hits a Venturi and actually pressure, it pushes pressurized air through that port, down through that hose and into that uh, inlet on the valve cover, right? People think that is actually a vacuum. Uh, this one, it's not, it's actually a supply of air. Again, it's not a huge volume of air, but basically it just kind of gently blows air into the system, right? So then that uh, introduces air into the uh, the crankcase and then it kind of does it does what it does and then it goes over onto the driver's side. So over on the driver's side, we have the uh, PCV valve on the, uh, in the valve cover. So then it's hooked up to a vacuum line, it's running along the injectors, and then it's going to an existing port, vacuum port on the intake. So the way it works, fresh air is introduced into the engine, goes into the crankcase, blah, 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 dirty air is then sucked out, it's then pulled through that vacuum line into the intake, and then it's burned again, it's a continuous loop. That's how, GM designed it on the truck intake, and basically this is, it's gonna be the same way on this. Really uh, no need to re-engineer the wheel. All right, so we talked about the PCV system, so now we gotta talk about vacuum, right? So if you own a Corvette or any car in the 70s, you realize how much these cars rely on vacuum, right? Uh, headlights, heater controls inside the car, and then the for the trans, right? So the trans looks for the sense of vacuums to understand when it needs to shift, right? And also you need vacuum for uh, power brakes, right? So all we're doing is we are adopting the same type of technique that, that was on the 350. So again, you have the main um, power brake hose right there, which goes on the back of the LSX intake, right? So that's pretty straightforward. And also on the back of that intake is another quarter inch bar, right? So it's kind of hard to see down there. And yes, I'm missing the uh, map sensor. But just to give you an explanation of what I did was we have a 90 degree elbow. It's coming off of that quarter inch uh, barb on the back of the intake. It comes up. It goes to a quarter inch uh, T fitting. So the, the, uh, the one off to the right goes off to the headlights and the one on the left goes to the uh, trans, right? So if we pull this away, you can see that's the connector right there. You can see the T connector. And then if you look, coming on the other side of the T, you have that little air filtration device. Uh, so make sure that you know it's a clean uh, vacuum, right? All right, so there you go. Hopefully this helps to explain the uh, the vacuum system, PCV, uh, ODB2, the harness in general, and all the little things that you need to account for as you're kind of merging the electrical systems from the old to the new and everything else. So again, it's not that complicated. You know, take it step by step and just chip away at the little things. And again, um, sometimes these little things take a lot of time, um, you know, once you stack them up. Um, I know for myself, trying to, uh, do some research on YouTube and forums and, and, and uh, groups on whatever. Um, sometimes you spend more time actually doing research before actually doing the actual work. So again, hope this helps. Um, at this point, we're very close to firing this thing up. The only thing we really need at this point is the PCM and hopefully that'll be back uh, for next weekend. We can uh, hook it up and make some noise with this thing and then see how it sounds. And then we'll make a decision if we're going forward or if we got to take a step back. So uh, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. If there's any thoughts, questions, or concerns, go leave me a comment in the comments box. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.